These are the stories of how prominent Londoners have overcome the negative influences of the capital to become positive male role models. Their journeys from boys to men. Boxer Lawrence Acoli returned home to his biggest fan. This is how he went from working in McDonald's to becoming a world cruiserweight champion. In the ring, I'm a beast, I'm a savage. December 2019. Backstage, I joined Lawrence Acoli as he celebrated a victory that meant his next fight would be for a world title. So Lawrence, you think this is the side that the public don't get to see? Of course, man, the swollen hands, swollen eyes. Uh, you know what I mean? Obviously everyone's here right now because I'm willing. Who will be in here for last? I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm all good, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's all good, happy to get another win in. So when you look back in your journey mm. from Tarzan. Olympic hopeful, from Tarzan, yeah. <laughs> what have you learned about Lawrence Okoli? Uh, he's an animal. He can't be stopped. Can I talk about myself on the third person? He can indeed. Yeah, Lawrence Okoli is a man that is on the mission. He doesn't know how he does it sometimes. He just takes the risk and they pay off. So long may that continue. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As a man, Akoli is full of confidence. He wins spectacularly. The world title will be next. Whether he's knocking out opponents or making music hits. In the ring, I'm a beast, I'm a savage. Hit him in the face, cause I'm all on the time. When I first met Akoli, he was slaying the King of the Jungle as an extra on the film set of The Legend of Tarzan. Since then, he's become one of the star attractions in boxing. But the man I knew was a stark contrast to his teenage years as a boy who was shy and bullied. If you think back to the Lawrence Akoli that wasn't a champion, wasn't an author, wasn't a rapper, how was your confidence impacted by the bullying that you... I, it was great, greatly impacted. I felt like, you know, I really took on other people's opinions or other people's words onto myself and internalised it. And I'm starting to feel a certain type of way about myself, like unhappy. Um, I might have to answer in class, not wanting to, not wanting to speak out or, you know, I, I was definitely more um, within myself. My love, your ambition, we came from humble beginnings. Akoli grew up in Hackney, a borough in London with high levels of poverty and inequality. As a teenager, he managed to smile through the difficult times. He was bullied due to his African heritage and for being clinically obese. As a child, Lawrence shared a room with his younger brother, Henry. Henry, how did growing up in this area help develop Lawrence as a man and a fighter? Uh, it was definitely challenging. Um, because, you know, as kids, everyone could be mean. Lawrence was extremely overweight, rubbish at football, so he established from early, if he does want to hear those mean jokes, he better, you know what I mean, make, give people a reason not to make those jokes. Akoli's mother, Elizabeth, worked as a social worker whilst raising his brother, Henry, and his sister, Rachel. When he was that little boy, did you know he grew up to be so big? Yes. Honestly, when I, when I was having him in the hospital and he kind of shot out of the... <clears throat> and the doctor, only, I'm not even joking, the doctor said, oh, he was actually a premature and the doctor said, oh my God, this boy is going to be very, very tall because he was long and, you know, very slim. And he said he's going to be over six foot tall. And within, I think, under one year, he was so tall, you would think he was about um, three years old at the time. So he's always, always been very, very tall. Akoli went to school in Stoke Newington, where his mother made sure he excelled academically. But whether due to bullying or teenage testosterone, Akoli was getting into fights even before he entered the ring. In an attempt to lose weight and channel his natural ability, age 17, a shy 6'5", 120 kilogram Akoli walked into Hackney Lions Boxing Club. I still remember it um, like it was yesterday. Um, I walked in there, um, I, was, I was heavy. Um, it's the first time I was made accountable in sports anyway. From the first day I walked in the gym, the coach was like, we see your weight here now, you're going to see it fall off because there's weight categories in boxing. So, you know, they set targets from day one. All right, give us a, a, a X amount of weeks, we'll be down to here and here and here. And um, that was the first part. 
than just the sounds and the, um, the feelings, hitting the bags, hitting the pads. I liked it, seeing everyone doing their own thing. And we had a circuit, um, you know, like uh, push-ups, sit-ups, whatever. And usually um, when I'm doing workouts, it's me, myself, and um, I wouldn't hold myself accountable as much. So 10 push-ups, I'd say, I'm gonna do 10. After five, as soon as I'm tired, you try it, you know, and I leave it. Uh, here in the gym, I do five, and I feel like leaving it, there's another boxer doing their 10, looking over, like, wait, wait, no, coach said 10, do your 10. So the last five I had to really keep doing, and then um, the accountability that other people put on me there, I started to internalize that and then start saying, you know what, 10, even when no one's looking and it was hard after five, I'll keep pushing to get the 10. So those kind of things from the first day um, really made me want to come back the next day and then the next day and then I just never looked back. Robert England coached the Coley to his first amateur title. What did you think of Lawrence when he first walked into the boxing gym? The first day he walked into the gym, I remember this character larger than life, but he was very quiet. The first thing I noticed was that he was walking around a bag and pushing it and sort of like, you know, just, it's just persona about him, that, you know. And then all of a sudden, I just see him throw a jab. I think it was the first jab he's ever thrown in boxing. And I just thought, what? And I looked over and I, it, 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 to me, for someone to throw a jab like that, who's never boxed before, who's never threw a punch before, most probably, it just sort of like took me attention. That really, you know, made me stand my stance and I just looked over and then I went over to him and I tried to position his feet in a sort of like roundabout way in that position and let him come off the bag a little bit. And then I said, just throw that again, but hold the right hand up near the chin. And when he threw that, well, that was a different grade of punch. You know, I thought to myself, this kid's got something. Yes, First fight was, um, was, it was, it was interesting uh, because I remember, um, obviously, um, I told maybe three or four people I've got a match, and I also didn't tell my mum. I just told her that I'm training for the, the weight loss. You can see the weight loss. But once the weights started coming off and the sparring started getting better, uh, my coach said, you know what? You're gonna have to, you have to, you have to give it a go. Have a boxing match. You're doing all this sparring, whatever. I remember his first night, he was quite nervous. But at the same time, he was quite confident and keen. Now, if, you, if that would have been the first Lawrence that walked into the gym, I think he would have found it even hard to walk into that ring. After the first round, he was enjoying it. And the crowd was enjoying it. Up on and... But then the day, the day come, I told a few people, I think it was a Friday, I told a few people at school, my brother and a couple of my friends. Before I knew it, he got around, Lawrence is having a fight. It's five pounds, or it was something reasonably priced. It's in Hackney as well. Everyone come down. On my way there, it was a bus full of people just on the way there, and I was just like, oh my God, like, it's serious now. And then people come, you know, if you lose to that, uh, we'll be seeing you on Monday or whatever. Um, so that was, that was a lot of pressure. Um, but obviously, I managed to win. That was exciting. And that feeling there, I needed it again, and then again, and then, yeah, I've kept it going. We just realised then, that, you know, this could add something special. The winner by a unanimous decision of Coley. The politics of amateur boxing meant a Coley and Robert England decided to leave Lions Boxing Club. England advised a Coley that the best move for his development would be to join Repton Boxing Club, where he instantly found success. But he would soon leave there as well, due to the club preferring another boxer, who had beaten Nicoli at the time by split decision. Rather than let the in-house rivalry continue, the club demanded Nicoli fight in a heavier weight class. Nicoli decided to leave and move to Dagenham Boxing Club, where a year later, even with a broken hand, he would avenge his earlier loss. Because boxing is a hard sport, but it's also an individual sport. So what you don't want to do is become too over on any coach or any club or any banner. And just remember that it's all about you and to push forward. So I think it built my character with adversity and helped me get to where I am now. At Dagenham, he met Brian O'Shaughnessy. 
who would take a Coley from a promising amateur to being able to spar with professionals like heavyweight champions Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua and Dillian White. A Coley's amateur titles and professional level sparring gained him an invitation to join Great Britain's boxing team I'm telling you. I like a Coley. where he would go on to become European champion but also face the last man to beat him. After being told it was an impossible dream, in just four years of boxing, Akoli qualified for the 2016 Rio Olympics, where once again he would face Savon of Cuba. The result would be the same, but the manner of the loss had changed. Akoli showed more composure in defeat. This would be the last time in his career to date that a referee would have to give him a standing count. It was uh, one of the most important um, points because it was a lot to do with mindset then, you know, where I was almost happy to just become an Olympian because it was such a long shot. Um, so for me, I said to myself, never allow myself to get into that position again where, you know, I set my limit or I, because uh, although I might say, yeah, I'm gonna, I want to go and get a side, I'd already set my thing to I want to be an Olympian. And once I got that, I don't think I had the same drive to go on and um, not, you know, not saying I didn't want to, but I didn't have the same mindset. So from then, I, you know, roll it out on a mind map and I said, any fight, any goal you have, go to smash it. Don't, you know, try to be a British champion and then that's it. No, don't try to be a world champion. Go in and win it. You didn't cry. I didn't cry. I don't. Did I, you I, might, cry did I, cry? I might have cried actually. Yeah, but it was so long ago. I tried not to think about it. But yeah, uh, did I cry? Yes. Did I cry for long? No. Uh, but you know, we're just on a journey. Uh, we're just on a journey, and those you know tears have um, helped me here um, to this point. And you know, that's probably what helped me as a professional. Akoli returned to the UK and signed a professional contract with Eddie Hearn's Matchroom Boxing, with Anthony Joshua as his manager. A milestone in Akoli's life. As a teenager, he was working at McDonald's watching Anthony Joshua win Olympic gold. Now, as a pro boxer, his career is guided by the world heavyweight champion. Lawrence said that people have been underrated his Olympic pedigree. What do you think about that? I think every fighter will have something to say because every fighter knows how tough it is. From a spectator point of view, he's dead, he's rubbish, he's that. But from a purist point of view, just getting in the ring is tough. Mm. So when he's saying people underrate his pe uh, Olympic pedigree, it's because he's so passionate about it. And I respect that because it is tough. Being an Olympian is tough, you represent the country. So not only pressure from a fighting point of view, you've got pressure from a mental side of view. Lawrence Akoli. Akoli's professional boxing career started with a bang. He went on to knock out opponent after opponent. Down he goes. He's not in the pro game. To make up the numbers, we know this guy's serious about boxing. But success in professional boxing is determined by more than just winning. It is the manner of the victories that gains fans. Whether it was a Cody's developing style or opponents not willing to trade punches, despite his unbeaten run, the bullying that a Cody had faced as a teenager returned from online critics. Calls me a child here compares me to a donkey, you know what that feels like? It's not nice, you know what I mean? But it's the thing that gives me the inspiration. In 2017, just two years after turning professional, Akoli headlined his first boxing show. Right, we're gonna see, bro. See Critics would say the pre-fight press conference was more entertaining than the fight. <laughs> you're gonna get them demons. Olympian, Olympian, don't you dare talk about pedigree. You only care oh, oh, oh. Lawrence, how's it yeah. feel? headlining your first major show? Uh, it feels normal, like I'm meant to be here. It's all been steps. I visualised this stuff from years ago, so now that it's here, I'm just taking out my strides. The line, Lawrence Acoli and Isaac Chamberlain, who can get it right. Right hand from Acoli, down goes Chamberlain. Acoli won the British beef and continued on his path to a world title fight. But as he learned to ignore his critics, his friends remained in his corner watching his back. It is a bit annoying because a lot of people don't understand him um, and they don't understand his journey or anything like that. So uh, people talk on social media, they just talk for the sake of getting a, a rise out of people. After opponent after opponent fell to Akoli's power, he began adding titles to his unbeaten record. Giant stride into the Wembley ring. 
Lawrence Akoli thoroughly believes in his ability, believes in himself. And new Cruiserweight Champion! We've got a bit of that. Crunching right hand of Mike Lyson steps in and waves it over. Challenging for even Garbu's European title. Just sinking into the ropes and allowing it to be easy to allow that. Big right hand and Garbu's legs doing a dance and in steps the referee. As a professional, Akoli has become British, Commonwealth and European champion. So all we can left now is the world. Um, so I'm going to keep on pushing. At the beginning of 2020, Akoli was preparing for a world title fight with his new coach Shane McGuigan. McGuigan was no stranger to the intensity needed to take a fighter to world level. You know, if he was in his mid-30s, you know, we wouldn't be able to do doing this, this intense training. Uh, the good thing is that time is on his side and uh, you know, he is, his body adapts well to the training and when, when we need to ramp it up, he can do it. But before Akoli could realise his dream, the lights were turned off in the sporting world. The only fight taking place would be the NHS against the coronavirus. Protect the NHS and save lives. Akoli's dream was temporarily locked down, but his hunger wasn't. To remain close to his fighting weight, he had become vegan and purchased his own training equipment. Each career expense came out of Akoli's pocket, despite his prize fighter income being locked down. Lawrence, being a professional boxer when you're not able to fight isn't the cheapest profession. <laughs> you're still paying for food, you're yeah. still paying for rent, but you don't have a salary like other sports people. How do you manage? Yeah, it's difficult. Um, obviously, you have to make sure that you've been sort of saving um, towards it and living within your means. Um, Obviously now um, with the lockdown, I've had to invest in like home gym equipment. You know, I've got a um, assault bike, various weight sets. Um, I had to pay for scaffolding to get a boxer bag put up. Just all those little costs, you know, they add up, they add up, they add up. Um, I'm still paying for a nutritionist, um, food, rent, everything else. I, my strength coach to do online courses and stuff like that. So you still have pretty much all the same outgoings, but no um, guarantee of when the next fight date is going to be, you know. Akoli used his time out of the ring to reflect on the highlights of his career so far. The proudest moment I had to date all now, with all the stuff that I've won and done, it's been going back to my sister's school and um, seeing the, the actual pride in her face, um, watching me, you know, give a speech and, you know, the grand reveal, oh, that's actually um, Lawrence's sister, blah, blah, blah. So that was, a, that was a great day. That was a great day. And that's, that's one of the proudest moments I've had just as a, as a person. I see him as my older brother, but then, yeah, he's a celebrity. Um, yeah, it's crazy to know that one of your closest family members is a celebrity. Like, if you were to know that your brother is a celebrity, you would feel like, wow, like, w when did this happen? Akoli trained at home for an end-of-year world title fight that became another casualty of the pandemic. His would-be opponent tested positive for the coronavirus, meaning 2020 would not be Akoli's year. But you know what, initially it was, I was all over the place, you know what I mean? Um, mentally and even just with training and stuff, because it's like you kind of lose the motivation and the drive when you built yourself up to something and then it's um, no more. Um, but then I've just been reminded that it's not no more, it's just been postponed. In 2021, just five years after turning professional, Akoli's weight was over. His world title fight was confirmed for the 20th of March. I went to Akoli's pre-fight camp in Kent to see how his preparation was going. Welcome to my crib. Relaxed and hungry for more than just success, Akoli's friends were by his side, all playing their part to make sure he was ready to take on the world. Uh, I'm very proud, to be honest. 28-year-old Will Harvey has been Akoli's agent since he became a professional boxer. You've been there right at the beginning, so how have you seen him develop as a person during that time? Um, I've seen him. I've seen him mature a great amount. I think, <clears throat> especially coming with coming into the professional game with the profile you have as an Olympian, 
Um, so I think that's an adjustment that he had to make quite quickly. I think, yeah, I think inevitably that, that it makes you mature very quickly as well. Obviously, he's exposed to uh, a lot more things that can potentially distract him, could potentially get him into trouble. Um, you know, you have wealth that you didn't have um, a few months before, a few years before. Um, so I've seen him have to adapt and mature you know, very quickly, I would say. Ironically, more people would have seen Akoli's first amateur fight than his world title attempt, which, due to the pandemic, was taking place without fans being allowed to attend. Yet his brother, who was there at the beginning, would again be cheering Akoli ringside. I've witnessed the hard work. I've witnessed the sacrifice. I've witnessed the setbacks. I've witnessed the injuries. I've witnessed the losses. I've witnessed how he's responded to losses. I've witnessed everything. And I use him as an example to people because it's like, I was there at McDonald's when he watched AJ win in the Olympic gold. I didn't even know, okay, but I didn't know what it is. And he from there said, I'm doing this. On fight night, the first person Lawrence will call will be his mother, who watches from the safety of her home. How important is the concept of family? Because obviously Henry's literally behind us yeah. right now. No, it's very important, do you know what I mean? They're the people that are really there when the going gets tough and like win, lose or draw. Do you know what I mean? My mum's not going to disown me because I lost a fight. So um, when I win, I'm happy. Um, she's happy and my little sister's happy and all that kind of stuff. So it's good, do you know what I'm saying? So they're not here today, but what level of a fight would you like them to be ringside for? Uh, never, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, I thought that boxing is not the kind of sport you want your mum there, it's like screaming. Um, so, do you know what I mean? I, I think especially she stays at home, watches and supports. I'm always screaming and shouting and I'm like, if I should go to the arena, they will kick me out. <laughs> if Akoli hadn't became a boxer, he planned to follow in his mother's footsteps and become a social worker. His mother's dream still inspires him to be a role model out of the ring. And you know what is amazing? He can fight his own corner. He can, you know, he's very eloquent. He can talk. And when, you know, like when I watch him doing the interview, I'm like, wow, he's good. He's good. I'm so proud of him. Yeah. And I know he works really, really hard. So yes, I am rooting for him and I'm praying for him. And I wish him all the success in the world and you know, for God to protect him and protect his opponent. Yeah. And please come home with that um, you know, with that yeah, with that belt. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, Lawrence. And the new <laughs> I can't wait. Tomorrow night, making his first attempt at a world title. Fighting out of and proudly representing Hackney, London, England. Please welcome Lawrence, the Sauce Akoli. Akoli. As Akoli weighed in for his title fight, he tipped the scales at 90.4 kilograms. The 30 kilograms he'd lost in weight, he'd gained in confidence, self belief, and the focus to make his family proud. Only one man stood in front of Akoli's world champion dream, his opponent and former two-time champion, Krzysztof Glowacki. On the night, Akoli walked to the ring to the sound of his own music. Need a new chain with a whole lot of carrots. In the ring, I'm a beast, I'm a savage. Hit him in the face, cause a whole lot of damage. During the fight, he dictated the rhythm. Putting on a punch perfect display in only his 16th fight. Tire him out. The more he hits fresh air, the more tired he's going to get, and then you'll get him later, okay? By the sixth round, Glavatsky crumbled to Akoli's power. Whilst Akoli celebrated his victory in the ring, His friends, brother and father were equally ecstatic outside of it. This is just the beginning. We've seen it from the start, from 17 to now. It's just been an incredible journey and I'm just proud that he's, you know what I mean, got to put his hand on the world title, cemented his name and legacy, the Coley name, legacy and history. The message to him is that he should keep it on, that he should do well. He's made us proud. 
made us proud. He's here, and I'm proud of him. The mom is proud of him. Everybody's proud of him. His brothers and sisters, they're all proud of him. I beg him to keep it up. And the new. I'm happy for him. He's a self-made person, and he has, dead, he has done it. He told me I'm going to be the world champion when he started. I'm proud of him. The boy who beat the bullies is now WBO World Cruiserweight Champion. The only thing Akoli had left to do was to give the belt to his mum as a present. Uh, is that a man? Cruiserweight champion of the world. Oh, How does it feel hearing that? Oh, no, it feels, it feels good. Obviously, it feels better now. Obviously, <laughs> seeing my mum and uh, everyone like that. Uh, for me, it's you know, it's important for my own you know journey. But it's good to see what it means to my family and. Yeah. Yeah. And the new. Elizabeth, yeah. you told me that you, you check your social media, you see the people that support yeah. him, but you also probably yes. see the people that haven't supported him. So yes. how does it make you feel when you see some of those negative comments? I think um, as a parent, it hurts. Sometimes I want to like respond that he's, he's, you know, he's an amazing guy, you know, get to know him. You know, he's, he's had so few, few, you know, boxing, you know, experience. And before he went to the Olympics, he had 25. People had 100 and whatever. And for me, that's a huge, you know, um, achievement. We should, instead of criticizing, you know, for me, I think celebrate, celebrate. Back home in Hackney, he was celebrated as a local hero. I'm really proud. And I've got strong roots here. And uh, when I see the kids and that play, and I remember I was one of the kids in the area. So it's um, good to kind of be able to show like um, a different side to the area. Obviously it's a lot better now than when I was growing up, but it's, it's always good to show if, if you believe in yourself, you can achieve anything. So if I can show that to anyone, I'll be happy with it. And how did coming from Hackney shape you as a man but also as a boxer? <laughs> I, I think it definitely did. I think there was a lot of character building when I was growing up um, that helped. Um, but then even in that, it's just the energy and the, the character and the era, you know, there's a, it's very vibrant. I live not too far from Dorsten and, you know, there's an um, Afro-Caribbean sort of market. So you get a lot of energy and stuff. So I'm just able to bring that sort of ca ca charisma, hopefully, to um, what I do. Thousands of hopefuls enter boxing gyms every year. Only a handful will become a world champion. But the amateur coaches that train them do it for the love of the sport and to guide young people off the streets to change their life in and outside of the ring. No, on eternity, you know what I mean? I feel that without him in particular, you know, um, although it's obviously I'm the one who goes out and fights and stuff, he was getting up at... God knows what time in the morning, because um, he had his own job, but he decided without pay, without anything, I'm going to train this group of lads. And there's no guarantee anyone that you train is going to do anything in terms of boxing, whether they're going to take it seriously, what they're going to do. But yeah, there he was. Yeah, apart from having a bad back sometimes, you always perform to the best he did. And every time I had him under my wing, he won every fight. And I, I always knew he was going places. Age 17, Akoli started boxing to go down a belt size. Today, the 28-year-old is looking to one day put the weight back on so he can win a heavyweight belt for his collection. No, it was the first time we had an interview. It was literally in my bedroom. You were getting ready to go to Rio. During that time, your life has changed so much. When you look back at how far you've come, what comes to your mind? Uh, I just feel happy and it's just blessed really you know um you know I, I was fortunate enough to see that footage again for the first time um you know recently and it's just like it's it's in like obviously i'm so happy i had the belief then but to, to make it a reality is just uh yeah it's breathtaking and of course you had a plan and that plan included winning each one of these yeah. and you do media interviews you've written a book yeah. You've got a song. It's like you're trying to do everything now. So let's start with this. Why was it important for you to write this? I think obviously you know me well. Um, I've had to deal with bullying and overcome a lot of different things in my life, um, confidence issues, etc. 
So for me, you know, obviously winning the World Cup was a good like exclamation point on all that. But I feel like just giving people the opportunity to, you know, dare to change their lives is gonna be is gonna mean a lot to me. Winning the World Cup is amazing, but if in ten years, five years, twenty years someone can come and say, you know, I read your book and it made me do this and I feel I feel like I've done something. And I was lucky enough, I say, to go back to your house and to see your mum and to speak to your mum. And she spoke about you so much pride, yeah. even though she initially wanted you to go to university and be a social worker. You've gone a completely different route that's brought you all of this. Mm -hmm. When you were able to go back and see her and bring her that world title belt, what was going through your mind as you were walking up the stairs? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that was a great moment for me. That was a really great moment. Because you know, I know how much my parents sacrificed, you know, especially my mum. Um, coming to England, you know, um, climbing up the ladder, working as a cleaner, going to university, getting her degree, going into social work to help others. So to be able to come and show her, you know what, your sacrifices helped, you know, your kids to become world champions, to go on and do what, you know, my brother's doing, etc. Is to me, it was a blessing because I know that, you know, all the choices that they made, they're going to be happy in it because me winning world titles, my mum winning the world titles, so she's now world champion. A lot of people know the story of McDonald's, you were working at McDonald's when you saw AJ, but people don't know why you were working at McDonald's. You're the oldest of the children and you were playing your part. So how important for you was to, even before you won all these titles and you obviously gained more money, to make sure that you played your part in making sure that your mum's struggles weren't as hard as they could have been? No, definitely. I think, you know, for me, that's one of my main motivations. Even now, you know, I want to get them a house um, out in the country somewhere, etc. So I'm just going to keep on pushing on and doing what I'm doing. Um, for me, as I said, in the culture that I come from and the way I was raised, it's important to sort of, um, you know, respect and those kind of things. And always, also, for me as a person, as I've gotten older and I've started becoming more independent myself, knowing what paying bills is and, uh, you know, food, how much food actually costs. <laughs> Um, and how much I used to eat as well. I know my mum, she, uh, you know, she, she had to work hard uh, to make it happen. And um, even despite our position, I never felt poor, you know. My mum always made sure that there was food, always made sure that there was, you know, if we needed to, you know, if I wanted to watch Cartoon Network, she'd work extra hard and, you know, pay the extra money for that channel. So she did everything she, she could. Um, so I just feel um, it's only right, you know, that I, I, I help her um, as and when I'm able. And when we go on the street, people literally come up to you now. They spot you all the time. You're 6'5", so you're not exactly the, the easiest person to miss. But at the same point, you can see the joy in their eyes in terms of what you mean to them, especially when you're back in Hackney. So when we had the lockdown and you were just kind of in your house, did you have that time to reflect on just how much you mean to so many people who may never, ever meet you in real life? Um... <sighs> Wow, great question. Um, I just, you know, in the lockdown, I, I, I didn't really focus on that. I focused on how to, you know, win the world title. But in the aftermath of that, you know, I feel uh, a pressure and a responsibility, you know, um, to carry on on this journey, you know. Um, the pressure is not one that's gonna, is too much for me. I think I'm, I'm ready and born and willing for it. But I feel like, you know, I wanna be able to, enhance that and make it bigger you know it's one thing to have a spark in your eye and be happy to see me but I want what I'm doing to go further and reach further and help just help people if it's not direct but to just go out and achieve something because I'm telling I feel like there's people out there who can change the whole world I'm a boxer you know what I mean I'm a world champion that's nice but I feel that there's people out there who are going to you know become doctors that cure, you know, biggest diseases and stuff like that, that are just waiting to be, you know, given a little nudge, go out there and go and achieve it. Believe in yourself, you know? Um, so for me, I just, I just want to just be some sort of a, a, a sort of, a sort of reference point, you know, a reference point of hard work and dedication, where it can get you a reference of what happens when you believe in yourself. If we stick back to boxing, You've got one of the world title belts, yeah. but there's others to get now. Mm -hmm. So for those people who aren't super boxing fans, what would it mean to you if you became the undisputed cruiserweight champ? Now, that's a, you know, 
that one I can't put into words. Um, that one puts you in legacy for the rest of time. You know, uh, you know that's yeah, that's something that I'm desperate to go and go out and achieve. You know, that one, like a world title, is, is amazing. I'm in the history books for sure, but that one puts you down as a pound for pound great, maybe a Hall of Famer even. So I think it's important um, that I go out and, and I just want to end up in the Hall of Fame. If I'm going to do it, if I'm going to talk selfish, I want to end up in the Hall of Fame. I think it's possible. I think I have the ability to do it. So I'm going to go out there and do it. And when you're in that Hall of Fame, do you also want to join that very, very small group of people that have gone from cruiserweight champions to also heavyweight champions? Yeah, definitely. In the whole of history, there's been two, you know, um, David Hay and Evander Holyfield. I'm not sure. I, I, I mean, there's, yeah. That's, that's the only ones that I've known or heard of. So to become third or, you know, by that time, yeah, I believe I'll be third. Um, so I think, um, yeah, amazing, amazing. That's real, three people in the whole of history have done it. That would be amazing. And of course, as I alluded to earlier, your journey is not just in this square, it's outside now, it's music, it's future going to be acting. When you're trying to balance that ambition to be more than just a boxer versus your ambition to be in the Hall of Fame. How do you think you're going to handle that? Because if we look back when AJ went to America, the razzmatazz and all that other stuff took his eye off the ball of what he actually has to do to keep the brand and keep his ambitions going. How are you going to make sure that you don't have that banana to slip on? I think, A, you know, having someone like AJ in my corner um, with that experience helps a lot. And also, it's also about staggering and you know um making sure that everything is timed well you know i feel like people do multiple films at the same time people do multiple things at the same time own multiple businesses so it's about and the build up to fights this is where it is you know um while i'm doing the acting or doing the music i'm still training and keeping up doing everything i'm meant to do and in those spare moments that's where you find time to go studio so you time find time to do a bit of acting lessons that's where you find the time to write so um in this period of my life, it's, I don't know how many more years I'm going to be able to punch this hard, punch this fast. I'm going to dedicate it to boxing and everything else will be secondary. And when I'm finished, that will be first. And then, you know, I'll be able to look back and say, look what I did. So if I had three magic boxes in front of me, mm -hmm. one is an Oscar, one's a Grammy, mm -hmm. one's a heavyweight title, which one are you choosing? I'm going for heavyweight title, obviously. Um, and then afterwards, uh, I'll put that boxing that's never going to go away and then open the other two up. <laughs> and of course, when it comes to your career so far, you've got a list, you've achieved many of them. There's still probably halfway to go from, if we're both honours for ourselves. If 10 years from now, you can look back and all you've achieved and you were to give a word of advice once again to the Lawrence Acoli out there dreaming of being the same as you, dreaming of reaching those goals, what would it be? Belief, generally that's all, you know, because all the other stuff comes off of belief, you know. Once you believe that you're destined or you're meant to be a champion, you'll do the bits to become that, you know. All the other stuff, hard work, dedication. You're not going to work as hard if you don't believe you're meant to do this. You're not going to dedicate yourself if you don't believe you're meant to be here. You're not going to take the fights if you don't believe you're meant to. So for me, undeniable self-belief and then everything else will fall off because I've, I've failed, you know, you know, like, you know, you, as I said, I, some stuff has happened in my life that I don't necessarily talk about on camera and I've had to keep on grinding through it, you know, so that's because of the belief that I'm meant to be a world champion, I'm meant to be unified. So I think once you believe, everything else will fall into place. And if you were to look directly into the camera and give a message to yourself, maybe three years from now when you've hopefully added to this collection, and you'll maybe move to heavyweight. You might have even beaten everyone at heavyweight by this moment, but what would your message be to the future Lawrence Acoli? Uh, well done. Let's live our best life. Thank you. Uh, continue to work hard. We've got more goals to go on out and achieve. And finally, Acoli's message to anyone trying to overcome bullying to reach their dream is... I tell him to just believe in himself and anything that you want to change in your life, you have the ability to, you know, um, and never to accept other people's opinions of you onto yourself. You have to know who you are and become more self-aware. Lawrence Acoli's story is one of self-belief. He believed he could overcome the bullies. 
He believed he could lose weight. He believed he could represent his country. He believed he could become a world champion. But most of all, he believed he could be a role model for his community and make his mother and family proud. Antoine Allen, ITV News.